Okay, this video is water, <clears throat> eight cups a day, instant IQ test. So, you know, if you walk by a table and you see a big jug of water on there, maybe with a straw coming out of it, you, you know a fat lady's sitting there. The point is, it's not making people skinny. There's, there's some myth that if you drink a big bottle of water, you're gonna become skinny, and it doesn't work. It used to be people thought diet soda pop would make you skinny, but that didn't work either. Okay, anyway, sort of the big trend these days is everybody needs eight cups of water a day. And, you know, if you just think about it for a moment, it's obvious that that doesn't make sense. Does an 80 pound woman need the same amount of water as a 300 pound guy? Um, I don't believe it either because marathon world champions, Olympic champions in the 1960s, they didn't drink any water. 26 miles a run in the 1970s, some of them still weren't drinking any water. I wrestled in college in the 1980s. We'd sweat off 5, 10 pounds of practice. We didn't drink any water till after practice. Um, there was no bottled water in those days. I didn't start hearing about everyone needs eight cups a day until after they started selling bottled water and Gatorade. Then hydration became super important. And don't get me wrong, hydration can play an important role in optimizing athletic performance. Uh, but this idea that you need eight cups a day and you have to put all this effort into it, I think that's kind of crazy. Um, and I, I hung around with a lot of you know national champion, world champion caliber athletes, and they never put any effort in drinking water. Um, Let's see, what else? Nowadays, you go to the gym and people are sipping on water constantly. They're barely breaking a sweat. Now, also, you talk about drinking eight cups of water a day. You know, is that really a good idea? What water are you drinking? Tap water quite often has a lot of stuff in it you don't want. It's routinely got F- in it. I wouldn't drink anything with F- in it. Um, it's routinely got a lot of chlorine in it. And it makes sense to have chlorine in there to sanitize the water, prevent infections let's say till it gets to your house, but you want to remove the chlorine with a uh, carbon filter before you actually drink it, preferably. So um, another thing is the water will routinely have aluminum in it. Municipal water filtration routinely puts aluminum in water because it's a so-called clarifying agent to make the water look more clear. But aluminum is a brain neurotoxin. It combines with fluoride. Fluoride uh, helps it to cross the blood-brain barrier. It makes it even more neurotoxic. So you're basically, if you're going for eight cups a day you're of tap water, you're increasing your exposure to brain neurotoxins. F- minus has a whole bunch of other uh, negative effects on the body, as does aluminum. Um, EDCs are endocrine disrupting chemicals. Often you can think of that as estrogen disrupting chemicals because most of them are estrogenic. OCPs is oral contraceptive pills. Most common oral contraceptive pill is EE2, ethyl estradiol. When a woman... Uh, takes birth control pills, <clears throat> some of that's excreted in her urine, and then her urine goes into the waterways, and it's too expensive for municipal water filtration to remove all this, so you are drinking some other woman, some woman's birth control pills to some extent if you just drink tap water unfiltered. Bisphenol A is a common estrogenic. Um, atrazine is another common estrogenic uh, herbicide sprayed on, for example, GMO corn. Uh, Nonophenols are like your... Uh, laundry soaps, for example. So all this stuff gets in the water, and when you drink that water, you're ingesting some of these estrogenic chemicals, which increase your risk of prostate cancer in men, increase the risk of breast cancer, uterine cancer in women. Uh, so there's other chemicals in there, potentially excessive iron. Now, some people say, well, I'll drink bottled water. Well, how do you know what's in your bottled water? You know, I go into the grocery store, and you could look at 20 bottled water brands in a row, and none of them will tell you what's in that water. Most of them will not tell you how that water was purified or where it comes from. You know, there's a few brands give you a little more information, or you can look it up uh, on the internet if they have a website. Very often, these bottled waters are, are stored in PET, polyethylene terephthalate. Well, phthalate um, is a, an estrogen. So it's got an estrogenic plastic bottle that outgasses when these bottled waters are often stored in a warehouse, potentially a hot warehouse or on a hot truck, and they'll sometimes sit there for weeks or months outgassing into the water. So there's potentially a lot of estrogenic chemicals in your bottled water. You know, uh, what's the best water to drink? It would be uh, pre-tested well water. Oh, by the way, if you're going to drink bottled water, I would say, you know, I've heard by Christopher Axley, he's Mr. Aluminum. He's sort of this brilliant biochemist who specializes in aluminum. He recommends having silica in it because he says that can form as a chelator to help remove some aluminum from the body. But I would think the best thing to do is just not even have to drink the bottled water. Just have RO at your house and that have it, and have an RO system coming out of pre-tested well water. So high-quality well water and RO filter it. Sometimes the water can be excessively hypoosmolar, too low in particles. TDS is total dissolved solids. It's a thing that looks like a pen. You can test 
the concentration of particles per square centimeter in the water. You can buy them for about $20. Um, anyway, squeezing a lemon into the water adds some particles to it, some osmolality to it. Some people are sensitive to hypoosmolar water, mean, meaning it's too diluted. Some people are not. But sort of the whole point of this talk was it doesn't make sense, this idea of eight cups a day. So be very careful with that. Um, if I want to optimize athletic performance or cognitive performance, let's say I'm giving a long talk or you know trying to max out on high repetition squats, I'll guzzle 32 ounces of beet juice, follow it with 16 ounces of reverse osmosis filtered water. And I know that optimizes my performance. I've tested that a whole bunch of times. But on a routine daily basis, I usually don't drink anything in the morning. I just get my water from eating plant foods. Well, anyways, I just wanted to make this point. A lot of people are drinking eight cups a day of tap water, and I think they're not doing themselves a favor. So, anyways, hope that was helpful.